The following is a presentation of WLRN Public Television. On a winter morning in South Florida, the sun rises over the Atlantic Ocean. It falls first on the beach hotels, then on the high rises across Biscayne Bay in downtown Miami, and then spreads out over a broad swath of urban sprawl to fall on a much older landscape, the Everglades. Early Native American inhabitants of the glades called this subtropical landscape Pahayoki, or grassy water. It may look like an endless swamp, but the Everglades is actually a wide, slow-moving river of grass flowing from the Kissimmee River in the north to Florida Bay in the south. It is a mosaic of distinct ecosystems connected by flowing water. These ecosystems are the habitats and food webs for an array of endangered and threatened animals, such as the American alligator, manatee, and roseate spoonbill. They also provide environmental services to Florida residents. The water that percolates down through the peninsula's porous limestone replenishes the Biscayne Aquifer, which provides nine million Floridians with fresh water. Mangrove forests in the southern end provide a buffer for coastal storms Together with seagrass beds, they extract carbon out of the atmosphere and store it in the soil, mitigating the effects of climate change. And this also supports fisheries that drive Florida's recreation and tourism industries. Yet, more than a century of agriculture and development has diverted this historic flow of water and introduced nutrient pollutants into the ecosystem, threatening the fish, plants, birds, mammals, even the soil itself. Throughout the year, teams of students and scientists from Florida International University in Miami set out from FIU's main campus. These teams are part of the National Science Foundation's long-term ecological research program. This work is part of the decades-long Everglades Restoration Project the largest ecosystem restoration project in the world, designed to put the Everglades habitats back in balance, accelerated now with historic financial support from Congress and the state of Florida. Student researchers at FIU help guide this multi-billion dollar, multi-agency program. Everglades restoration, to me, is such a pivotal project to the future of our state, to the future of our planet. We're really focusing a lot on climate change and the capacity of the Everglades to be a major carbon sink, meaning that it helps to keep carbon out of the atmosphere and hopefully helps to mitigate some of the worst impacts of climate change. But it can only do that if we're effectively conserving it and restoring it through the various projects under the comprehensive Everglades restoration plan. The Everglades is now about half its original size but the problems it faces are only getting bigger. We're detecting salinity in places where we've never detected salinity before. And those days with detectable salinity are increasing from a few days to multiple weeks to a month. That's pretty rapid change for an ecosystem. It is in everyone's interest that the ecosystem bounces back from its many shocks and that restoration succeeds so we can recover a healthy, thriving Everglades for plants, animals, and for humans. Everglades restoration is arguably one of the, if not the most successful ecosystem scale restoration programs ever undertaken in the history of the planet. Collaboration has not only been key to the success, but it's an, been absolutely necessary from the very beginnings of the restoration program. And Florida International University has been at the center of that science since the very beginning. The eyes of the world are really on South Florida. Our students and scientists are working as hard as we can to ensure that the restoration project is as effective as possible for the Everglades, South Florida, and the world. 